In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. On our Gospel reading today, we have all the disciples filled with the good news of the resurrection of Jesus, and then there's doubting Thomas. I think Thomas gets a bum rap here. Sometimes we in the 21st century church have an idealized picture of the post-resurrection church. There's no more clear example of a church that's struggling with doubt than that of the church. And therefore I would suggest that it's not just Thomas who's struggling here. At least Thomas has the courage to give voice to his doubt. So let's look at the record. The record we have in the four Gospels. We have different accounts of the resurrection and what took place. How many angels there were and how many guards there were and who rolled the stone away and who saw what and when did they see it? And who saw Jesus at the tomb? And who talked with Jesus at the tomb? Who was at the tomb? And who ran to tell the disciples? If you take the time to read all four resurrection accounts from each of the four Gospels, we learn at least, the, at least this much. There's Mary Magdalene, who saw Jesus first. She went and she told the disciples. The disciples doubted, and they didn't believe. And then there are the women who were at the empty tomb. They tell the disciples, and the disciples doubted, and they didn't believe. And then there's Peter and John who go running to the tomb to try to make sense of these reports that they're getting. And they leave the tomb and Peter is at best perplexed. And then there's another account that Peter at some point in time during this process, this time frame, Peter himself encounters the resurrected Jesus. But no one else was around. And the disciples don't really seem to believe him. They doubt him. And by the end of it, Peter doubts a little bit himself. Faith or doubt? Here they are. They've seen the tomb. They've talked with the women. Some of them believe, and some of them are still doubting, and some of them have faith, and some of them don't believe. And yet, here they are, still hiding a week later. The disciples are filled with fear and doubt. This is real life for them. And then it happens. They're all gathered together, these disciples, men and women, in, the, in this house. The doors are locked and the windows are shut, and Jesus is suddenly amongst them. And he shows them his wounds, all except for Thomas. And so now we have the disciples who have seen Jesus. He showed them his scars, and they no doubt believe, and they're filled with faith. And yet a week later, when Thomas is finally on the scene, where are they? They're back in the same house with the same door shut, still hiding. At least Thomas believes now. And I know that we in our, again, 21st century church, we're a few years removed from the resurrection. And it becomes a little more easy for us to believe, to affirm. When, when Father T.J. begins, Alleluia, Christ is risen, we respond, the Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. But that's not really the way it was in the first century. We're a little bit removed from the crucifixion. We're a little bit removed from the resurrection. The disciples saw it. They lived it. Jesus was arrested. He was tried, and he was crucified, and he was dead, and he was buried, and this they saw, and this made sense, and this was real. And so here are the immediate disciples of Jesus, and they're struggling with doubt and different levels of faith. And Jesus comes to each of them in the midst of their doubt so that they may believe so that their faith may grow. I think we're uncomfortable talking about doubt. As a church, it's all about faith, not doubt. So what about doubt? Let's talk about doubt just for a few moments this morning. And I would suggest to you that no matter how strong your faith is, at some point, we will experience 
is doubt. If you don't believe me, talk to someone who's lost a child, who's lost a spouse. Talk to someone who just got diagnosed with cancer, or in the midst of a divorce, or is a victim of terrorism. Doubt is real. It's part of life. It was real for the disciples. It's no less real for us. So the real question for us to sort out is this. Is doubt sin? Is it? Is doubt incompatible with faith? Is doubt a sign of weakness? Through the ages, major leaders of, of our church have all struggled with doubt. Martin Luther struggled, John Calvin, Charles Spurgeon, more recently C.S. Lewis, Mother Teresa, Pope Francis, and even our own Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby. Pope Francis spoke openly about the role of doubt in faith. And I quote, Who among us has not experienced insecurity, loss, and even doubt on their journey of faith? Everyone. We've all experienced this. Me too, said the Pope. Doubt is part of the journey of faith. It's part of our lives. It shouldn't surprise us because we are human beings. We're marked by fragility and by limitations, and we're all weak and we have limits. And so the Pope goes on to say, don't panic. We all have doubts. And yet Jesus comes in the midst of our doubt. Justin Welby, the Archbishop of Canterbury, was quoted several years ago as saying, there were moments where I wondered, I even doubted that there was God. He may lead 84 million Anglicans worldwide, but he's also a man who is, well, he understands anguish and loss and rage and the cold bareness of grief. He lost his firstborn child. Joanna was just a seven-month-old baby girl when the car accident happened. A period that Justin describes as utter agony, asking pointedly, is there a God? And where is God? And Jesus came to him in the midst of his doubt. I'm afraid that sometimes we tend, as Christians, to be actors. We want to convince others. We want to put on a good face and inspire them. And so we tend to ignore doubt. We tend to shy away from questions. We even shy away from the Old Testament. The Old Testament is a great place because there are a lot of folks who ask questions in there. The Old Testament, I think, proves that God honors those who ask questions. You will remember Job. He emerges as the hero of the book, not his theologically defensive friends. Job had questions. So is doubt sin? Is doubt incompatible with faith? Is doubt a sign of weakness? What do we do with doubt? I would suggest to you that instead of being a sign of weakness, Doubt can actually be something that causes us to dig deeper into our relationship with God. It can even make our faith stronger. One theologian says it this way, if we don't have doubt, we really don't have faith. The same theologian also said, doubt are the ants in the pants of faith causes us to search and find answers. Doubt is the seed of faith wanting to believe, but it's struggling, it's searching, it's, it's just barely holding on. Just like the disciples in today's gospel. Just like those Christian leaders I mentioned earlier. We may look at ourselves in the mirror. We may look at our brothers and sisters and only see a doubt in Thomas. That's okay. Jesus made a point to bring the, pre the peace of God to Doubting Thomas. To Doubting Thomas who then boldly declared, My Lord and my God. 
Historically and unfortunately, the church has seemingly chastised people who admit their weakness and their failure. And so as Christians, we've hidden behind a thin veneer of false cheerfulness and make-believe while we're secretly filled with hurt and doubt. But the good news of today's gospel is this. It's okay to question. It's okay to have doubt. It's healthy to have doubt. Because when you doubt, when you seek Jesus in your doubt, he will come to you and meet you right in the big fat middle of your doubt and bring healing and wholeness and peace. Faith in our life is not static. Faith must continue to grow. And the only place that faith can grow is where we have doubt. The only room where faith can grow is where we have doubt. And so, my brothers and sisters, may we join with that disciple who Jesus met in the midst of his doubt, that disciple who grew in faith, that disciple who declared, my Lord and my God. May we be as bold as Thomas and be straightforward with God, with our questions and our doubt, and allow Jesus to meet us at our need. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord.